Uh, excited to be playing in Houston next week and get this thing rolling. Um, I think for us, early in the season, you've seen we've, we've brought some guys back a little bit slowly. Um, we're going to continue to do that um, uh, in, in light of, in mind of the, the short turnaround, the very short camp that we've had. Um, we start with five or seven games on the road. Um, that would be difficult for any team in any circumstance. So, but uh, you know, we are going to be taking a long-term view of the teams that we field here in the first month of the season, in particular, uh, as we work our guys back to fitness and try to get guys on the field where they can stay on the field uh, and not in a position where they can play once or they can play 60 minutes and then they have to come out and, and things like that. So um, I'd say that's the, the kind of theme for the early going. That said, we're very excited about our team. Um, we feel like in really simple terms, uh, we've taken a, a championship winner uh, and we've added Clint Dempsey uh, to that team. Uh, so that's really exciting. Um, we're very excited about how uh, Ladero, Dempsey and Morris played together in the four games they got last year. Uh, and uh, Dempsey and Torres have yet to take the field together. So uh, we believe there's a lot of reasons for optimism. Um, we know we're going to get everybody's best shot this year. Uh, it's going to be very difficult, but we're excited about the prospect of defending our first title. Based on his his time during the preseason, is Clint fully cleared and, and he, could, could he be in the 11 on, on Sunday? Yes, he could. Um, yes, he's cleared. Uh, you know, to state the obvious, we're still six months removed from the last time he played 90 minutes in a match. So uh, that is still going to be a work in progress and consistent with, with my open. Um, we are not going to push anybody uh, back quickly at this point. Uh, it's far more important to us as to uh, how we look later in the season than in March. Given some of the nagging injuries you've had here in training camp and with 23 guys that seem a little light right now, I anticipate you probably will add some a couple guys before the season opener. but. Are you, are you okay with that number going into the season? Yeah, I think you'll see us add a couple guys even this week. Um, um, some stuff that internally you guys probably can, can put together. Uh, <clears throat> so that's been encouraging, and the, and the continued development of our young players has been encouraging, um, both in preseason with the academy kids, but also with the S2 kids that we've come up. Uh, and I think that's something that you'll see us do every every year now going forward, and, and I'm really happy about personally. Um, that said, we're going to continue to look uh, for some solutions, some options. Um, I don't think we're under pressure to fill up the roster right away. Um, we could go in with, you know, fewer than 25 guys signed on opening day, um, and that's okay. You know, we, we have options, so we're going to continue to explore. Um, again, we want to give young players a chance to prove themselves if they're able to do that, because uh, we believe that's the long-term future of the organization. Um, and look, candidly, if, if we look at our starting 11, we look at our top uh, 16, 17, 18 guys, we feel like, when healthy at least, uh, we're in a pretty good position. What we want to avoid is making some kind of panic signing or some kind of pressure signing. Um, uh, because we have some of the, again, the veteran guys that we've consciously chosen to bring back slowly. We don't want to then act against our own plan and say, hey, but now, gosh, we got to sign somebody this week because, you know, we're not sure if we have a, a third string player at this position or that position. With today's roster announcement, with the additional two homegrown player slots being opened up, does that affect how you're going to move forward with uh, so many academy and potential homegrown players? Over the past weeks? Long term, yes. I mean, we knew this was coming. So for us, this isn't new news. And, and so, I mean, Henry and Shay will be in these spots. I mean, and that was part of the reason that we signed them going back uh, to the offseason. So it doesn't change how we how we view it. Um, an ability to sign more young players, to say the obvious, is consistent with what our club philosophy is. And we, we do think that that's a good thing going forward, Dave. <coughs> Jordan comes in, wins rookie of the year, scores a goal that sends you guys to MLS Cup. I mean, for year two, what are sort of the realistic expectations for how he can keep growing as a player? Uh, um, we're going to give him a break, first and foremost. Uh, he has not had a lot of rest. Those guys that went to the national team camp, Evans, Marshall, him in particular, those guys are training two weeks, uh, a little bit a little bit under three weeks to prepare for national team camp. Um, and again, that's simply not tenable for a 10-month season. So uh, first off, very importantly, Jordan will come back when he comes back. Um, so he was in training today a little bit. We'll see how he does. Um, expectations for him are uh, to play the same way he's been playing. Um, I read uh, an interview with him today from, from I can't remember, uh, one of Seattle Metropolitan maybe, one of the, the arts and culture things that we're doing. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure it's a very fine uh, periodical. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, what Jordan said, though, was I want to have fun. And we want him to have fun. And when he has fun, he plays well. And, you know, again, he's going to be out there with, with uh, Ladero and with Dempsey. 
and I think those guys are going to play, play him a ball in occasionally that's going to give him some opportunities and he's going to make some of his own and um, I just want that kid to continue to grow and continue to have fun. How comfortable are you with the, the roster perspective in regards to the, the ninth position? It seems like you got Bruin and, and Adekoye and maybe uh, obviously Morris, but aside from that, the depth, how comfortable are you with that? Very. You just named three guys for one spot. That's as good as we get in MLS, man. Um, you know, we got two proven starters up there in, in uh, Morris and Bruin. Um, obviously, Jordan's got a little bit more positional flexibility. Uh, Shea's played out wide in college, too. But, but look, yes, I think you've correctly uh, nailed it. Uh, I think it's Jordan and, and Will and, and Shea uh, for that one spot. And, you know, that's, that's where we're going to go with it. There's been a lot of rumors and speculation in our world linking you guys to Honda. Is there any uh, comment? I drive the I drove a Toyota for a long time. So that, this is uh, not that, sorry. Uh, still getting into my my uh, 2017 game. Um, <clears throat> the uh, you know yeah obviously, obviously I read the paper. Uh, believe it or not, I read most of what you guys write uh, or talk about on TV. Uh, and and yeah, I see the rumors, see the links. Uh, we obviously aren't in a position to comment about a player that's under contract to another team. Um, and uh, you know I don't see that changing. So um, you know I'll leave it at that. So going back to the academies, I know you're really strong on homegrown players. What did you make of, uh, of Olsen, Morris, and Rogers, uh, the academy kids who played with the team in preseason? I thought they did well. We didn't have David for very long. Uh, you know, David uh, joined just for that last week and stuff, and, and uh, he's been at school. Um, you know, we've had uh, Sam and, and Jake with us for a longer period of time in the academy. So what I'd say is all those kids are making progress. I think all of them got ground down a little bit at the end of preseason, and again, that's normal. You're talking about literally teenage kids that maybe aren't done growing yet uh, and putting them in a situation where you're running them ragged uh, with pros, with men, uh, for a month at a time in, in the case of Sam and Jake. And, and uh, you know, it's pretty normal they show some wear and tear at the end of that. But those kids, uh, they hung in there, um, and, you know, we're going to try to uh, refresh them a little bit, get them back up to speed. But, we you know, we do think that uh, – those kids, uh, Azriel, some others, um, you know, have a future in our organization long term. And whether that's with us too, uh, or that's eventually with the Sounders, you know, that remains to be seen. Um, but you've heard us talk now fairly extensively about how there's a progression. You start at the academy. Um, once you're in the academy, progress to playing for S2. Once you play for S2 all the time and you do really well, then come on up and, and try to play for the Sounders. So we'll take it step by step. Um, and again, we do we do look at that as a sign of progress that we have those kids in the pipeline. And um, again, as I've said, uh, you know, Seattle's done a great job of producing spectacular players. Um, I want us to improve on the number of good players that we produce. Um, and I think Henry and Che are, are examples of good players um, that are coming up uh, with a lot of potential. And I think our academy kids, if you look at the number of kids we have on the national teams, um, that's continued to, the youth national teams, that's continued to increase and we're going to keep working on it. It's fair to say that depth is, is critical then on a team like this in terms of the long sense and bringing the young guys up for depth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like we're allowed to roster. Um, I think it's 28 that we could get to uh, all in. Uh, by rule 30, uh, sorry, uh, by rule we have I think now 31 spots if we picked the homegrowns and we picked uh, we loaned somebody out for the year and we rostered 20 senior roster players, etc. Um, most of my teams I don't roster 20 senior players. Um, we try to roster 18. We're, we're, it's a, you can have anywhere between 18 and 20, and the, the point of rostering 18 is it allows you to pay more money to those 18 guys. Um, and then uh, there, there are restrictions. The second roster, that supplemental roster, which is spots 21 through 24, uh, that can only be minimum salary players. So normally that's that tends to be young players uh, and then the, the last group of roster spots 25 through 30 are the apprentice roster spots and those literally have to be young guys and and they make even a, a lower salary than the, the minimum salary so um, that those are all categories then where you're going to have on a 30-man roster at least 10 are going to be young uh, and then you look at that senior roster as the guys who are going to be more the veterans the guys with the experience and um, we want to have at least three guys for every two spots uh, on the field um, you know, and they look in a perfect world, firing on all cylinders, you'd have two guys for every position. But the reality is that that second guy in almost every case is going to be a younger player who you believe in long term and has some potential, but it maybe isn't as established and proven as uh, the guy in front of them. Um, and you're allocating your salary cap with a little bit more weight toward that senior roster. Thank you. Uh, Garth, one last one for Doug. Garth, uh, this is your first offseason with uh, Brian and it's kind of the head coach. What was that relationship like now, adding him to yourself? Chris Anderson, Kurt Schmidt, the talent evaluation. Brian and I have been great. Uh, Brian's been great from the day that uh, we started working together, um, and I've appreciated that relationship. And I think he's brought a really clear uh, judgment of what he's looking for. Um, and you know, 
again, as you guys heard me talk ad nauseum about the, you know, the best general manager and coach are the ones that work together. So we're going to try to get Brian the players he wants um, while still being consistent with the style of play we want to have. We want to have, we want to have the ball. We want to dictate play. We want to be a big club that, that is fun to watch. Uh, and we're going to continue to work toward that. Keep going, guys, by the way, if you have other stuff. It, it, it seemed like... Uh, uh, I don't want to do this again in three days. This is We're, we're almost there. <laughs> yeah. It was going to mention that... Uh, Almiron and Sebastian Blanco were both players that were looked at over by, by Matt. I let him go. By, by Seattle, uh, what, what went behind maybe not bringing those guys in and you know dealing their rights or anything in that regard? I know it rains here a lot now, especially in summer. But the last thing I haven't seen yet is a money tree, and uh, you know <laughs> we'd all like to sign guys uh, twenty million a pop every every uh, couple of weeks, every couple of months. But that's not the way this works. So, I mean, look, you get you get three DP spots. Um, when we went out and scouted uh, the signing that ultimately wound up being Ladero, we found players that were similar to Ladero. Um, those guys are both really good players, um, and you know the way MLS works is, you know, if there are guys to whom you made offers, we did in the course course of our process, um, which again shows you we were interested in those players, uh, and you know, we ultimately didn't conclude agreements with them, and so therefore it made sense to sell their rights rather than just sit on them and have them not be worth anything. And and again, we're still in this process with our league. We're trying to grow. We're trying to get better, uh, and so maybe as counterintuitive as it signs. Um, we want to identify good players as a league and bring them into the league and hopefully have a product that more people want to watch. Garth, the idea of, of bringing some of the veteran guys back slower to begin the season, was that something that you put in place immediately after the end of last year, or was that based on kind of their how they responded when they got back from national team? A little bit of both. As soon as we got some guys invited to the national team camp, I was worried. Um, you know, that that just meant absolutely no rest for those guys whatsoever. Um, second, um, you know, we, you know, we, we you know, everyone thinks that they know what they're doing, right? But uh, to state the obvious, Columbus and Portland didn't make the playoffs the year after they made the final. Uh, and so we did some homework and we talked to those guys and we said, hey, you know, we think you guys, uh, you know, what, what, what do you guys think happened? And, you know, one of their feedbacks, some of the feedback from them was, you know, it was too short, and it really wasn't enough time to rest and recover. And and, uh, and again, I don't want to speak for them, but but you know, the, the, it was the general gist of the conversation. And um, I think it behooves us to try to learn from the experience of teams that, that uh, again we think are are well run. And, and uh, I guess I'm not supposed to say that, but uh, you know, <coughs> who we respect at the very least. And and, and uh, you know, we're going to try to avoid that fate this year. So, what is the expectation for the early season? You're playing young guys; the veterans are sitting. Is there a win number, or does it just they get experience? I mean, you still want to play high-level soccer. Philosophically, what does that look Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, and, and I'm not saying we're going to play all young players and not play any veterans. Right. Um, you know, I think you're going to see actually an 11 in Houston that looks similar to to the 11 that played the final. I mean, understanding some of the guys, obviously, that came and went. Um, so. Uh, yeah, well, all I'm saying is there's not a number, there's not an expectation. But look, when you start five or seven on the road, you're not going to win every road game. That's just the nature of our league. So, um, you know, there's not going to be any panic. And, and again, just geographically, that, that takes us through April. So if on May 1st we've won two or three games, um, will that be great? No, I want to win. We want to win every game. But are we going to freak out as a result of that? No, we're not.